Hey, welcome to Electron Online. Here's our fourth example on how to work with relative velocities. In this case, uh, we have a river that's flowing to the right at two meters per second, and we have a swimmer who's trying to swim across the river, swimming straight across the forest because the current is flowing to the right. The actual path that the swimmer will take will be at an angle like this, and will end up on the other side of the river, away from the point directly across where he started. The question now is, how fast is the swimmer swimming relative to a stationary observer on the side of the river? And how far will the person end up past the point directly across from the starting point? Okay, the best way to do a problem like this is to use vector quantities. And you want to draw the vectors that represent the velocity of the river, you want to draw a vector that represents the velocity of the swimmer, and you want to make the length of the vector proportional to the velocity of the swimmer and the velocity of the river. Which means I'm going to end up with a vector that looks like this, representing the velocity of the swimmer, and I'm going to end up with a vector like this, which represents the velocity of the river. So this length will then be 3 meters per second, this length will be 2 meters per second, and then the vector sum of that will be the actual uh, velocity of the swimmer relative to the side of the river or relative to the observer on the side of the river. So this would then be what we would call the resultant velocity, V sub bar. Oh no, I can't call it V sub bar because I used R for river already, so I'll just say V resultant or the effective velocity or the apparent velocity of the swimmer relative to B. All right, so if we want to find the magnitude of that, we simply have to use Pythagorean theorem in this case. So we can see that the velocity of the, uh, the resultant or the apparent velocity is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares. Uh, so that would be 2 squared plus uh, 3 squared. And so this would be equal to the square root of 4 plus 9, which is equal to the square root of 13. So that's how fast the swimmer will appear to be swimming according to observer B. So that's 13, take the square root, 3.6 meters per second. Okay, now coming over here, I still have to find out how far down river he'll end up when he gets to, this, to the other side. So now we need to know what is the component of the motion in this direction. And then we realize, since he's swimming in this direction and the river's carrying him sideways, he will still swim across the river at this velocity. So therefore we can say that the distance is equal to velocity times time, or time is equal to distance divided by velocity. Of course he's swimming a distance of 90 meters, and he has a velocity of 3 meters per second, so you can see that would be 30 seconds. So the swimmer will be in the water for 30 seconds, will be on the other side of the river, and then you can say, well, that's quite a swimmer, 90 meters in 30 seconds. Wow, we better sign this person up for the, link, uh, for the Olympic team. Anyway, how far down river will the river have carried him? Well, that velocity will be at 2 meters per second for 30 seconds. So then we can say that x is equal to uh, velocity in the x direction times time. And so that would be 2 meters per second for a time of 30 seconds. And so that means the river will have carried him 60 meters downstream by the time he gets to the other side. And that's how to do a problem like that.